Hey guys, welcome back to Predict the Restoration Tips for the 17-inch models. In this installment we're going to be talking about how to disassemble the plastic cover over the CRT, how you can clean it, and what all we're looking at here. Now I happen to be in the middle of working on a debutante model and I wanted to uh, clean the CRT housing, so let's talk about how to disassemble this and how to clean it, put it back together. Now the screen cover is in very good condition and it looks to be rather clean, however this is decades old. Static electricity builds up on the inside surfaces due to the high voltage and contamination tends to find its way in there and get deposited both on the inside of this cover and on the glass CRT within. So I'm going to take this off and clean it. Well, how the heck do you do that? Well, your first thought might be, we need to take this band off, and that is correct. And if you look in the bottom, there's a spring here, and it's hooked on to either end of this band. So in the past, I thought, hey, the way to do it is grab something on those pliers, stretch out the spring, unhook the end, and take the band off. And you can do that. However, it's not very easy to do and it's even more difficult to get it back on. There's another way. There's an easier way. If you've got some strong hands. If you don't, try to find somebody who does. We're going to flip this around so we've got it right side up. We're going to leave that spring on there and we're going to stretch out the band such that we can slip it over the top of the CRT. Now, this is hard, brittle plastic. We don't want to scratch this when we're pulling this band off, so be careful. What you need to do is get your fingers under there and start loosening it up. And there's little ears, as you'll see in a moment. The goal is to get this over one of the ears and then the opposite and we put it back on. Alright, but we're not done yet. That just exposed another band. This is steel. This is what's really holding it together. And that we get off by simply undoing a Phillips screw on either end. And yeah, it's not filthy, but it uh, definitely has some dirt on it and it's sticky too. So yeah, that's <laughs> it's nasty. We're gonna, we're gonna clean that thoroughly. And what are we gonna clean it with? Just glass cleaner of your choice, ammonia or alcohol based. I don't think it really matters. My spray is broken, so I'm just gonna pour some onto a paper towel here and go over it. And then we'll do the same on the inside cover of the plastic. Oh yeah, that was a little bit dirty. So with that off, we should get a brighter, sharper picture. Now I've been working on the inside of the plastic cover, it was also 
dirty for that. I've been using a microfiber cloth rather than paper towels. Paper towels can leave fine scratches. Here's another product I've had good luck with called Plexo. Anti-static uh, plastic and glass cleaner. Spray some onto a brand new uh, microfiber cloth here. And go over it. it. Smells pretty nice too. So if you use this on the outside, it'll also leave your set smelling delightful. Not horrible, but it is dirty. And while looking through this, I can see that there are definitely scuffs and blemishes on the other side. So we're going to use notice number two on the uh, on the surface. And here we've got some some chucking, some fine scratches over here too. For those of you not familiar with it, Novus Number no. 2 is kind of the go-to all-purpose plastic polish for uh, Bakelite and, and uh, various plastics and whatnot. Uh, I use it all the time, cleaning knobs and various plastic pieces and of course these screen covers. It's a fine abrasive. So you put some on there and work it around and it's actually abrading the surface. Just removing a little bit of the surface material. For the first pass or two I just kind of keep working with this until it's pretty well depleted then I'll put more on but the way you're really supposed to use this is you put it on and uh, like car wax and leave it on and let it dry and then uh, buff it out so that's what I'll do on the final pass but when you want to remove a bit of the surface I don't see any point in letting it dry to a haze and all that because I'm just going to keep working and working it thing though is until you remove it you can't really do a progress check because the whole thing looks terrible right now because it's covered with this goo. I'll do one more pass and then I'll let it dry. It just takes a few minutes and then I'll buff it out and then we'll see where we are at. If you uh, don't have this, you want to go to your local auto parts store, uh, this stuff is somewhat similar. It's not quite as abrasive though. Or you can get a headlight polishing kit. But don't start out with the really coarse stages unless you really have some deep scratches you want to deal with. So I bought one of those headlight cleaning kits and man, the, uh, it starts out with a really coarse, uh, I think it was sandpaper. And uh, <laughs> you got to go through a whole lot to get it to be polished clear again. And that means you end up removing a lot of material. Unless, again, you have deep scratches, you really don't need to do that. All right, so we'll let that dry and then buff it out. All righty, I think that's dried sufficiently. When I say buff out, what I really mean is kind of come in at a sharp stroke and constantly rotate the cloth. It's not really exactly buffing, but uh, I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> Once the bulk of this polishing compound is off, then we will go over and buff it in a circular motion. spot and go over the whole thing. Oh, 
All right, let's see what we got. Yeah, that looks a whole, whole, whole lot better. It's not perfect. Uh, there's some scratches down here, some marks. That's what I was calling checks earlier. Uh, those would have to be wet sanded out. And there is an unfortunate flaw right there. But I don't think those will be too visible, and this screen cover is in such nice pristine condition otherwise. I'm not going to mess with it any further. You see, the flaws on the outside, you can polish this anytime. It's easy to get at. While I've got this apart, I'm far more concerned about cleaning the inside. And while polishing that, I just realized I touched the inside surface, so I'm going to have to clean this again. Um, I'm going to reassemble this and make sure there aren't any dog hairs or dust bunnies or anything inside. I'd hate to have to, I hate to accidentally seal some stuff in there. Now hopefully you'll never need to break a predict a head unit down this much. But if you do take off the side nuts, after removing the band and the plastic front, you'll be left with this, which is a heavy steel band with a hoop attached to it. That's what holds the CRT and gives you mounting points. So there's a band, steel band that goes all the way around it, attaches to the bottom swivel, and then the arms attach on the sides here. There is a screw you can tighten down on either side. That provides the tension to hold this in place. Don't go crazy. Tighten that too much, you can shatter the picture tube. Like watch, there's one on the outer band. The only reason you would ever need to do that is if you were going to replace the pitcher tube. Like I said, hopefully you will never need to. But if you do, you have to go down this far, and you're going to have to... This one you can probably leave alone, assuming your replaced pitcher tube is exactly the same uh, outer circumference. Um, but it probably won't be, so you probably will need to loosen or tighten that and uh, take that one out as well. I'll give you a little anatomy here. So, this whole glass thing, that's the pitcher tube. It has this coating on it. That's important. That is a conductive graphite-based coating that gets grounded. That is on the outside. On the inside, it's also a conductive surface. Glass in between, and this is the high-voltage lead. That goes to the inner conductive surface. So, two conductor surfaces. Glass in between, that's an insulator, forms a capacitor. That's what filters your high voltage for the pitcher tube. That's why there's this hoop up there. It rubs against that coating, and that goes to this wire, and that goes down here, and it gets grounded. That forms your high voltage filter capacitor. It's important to have that coating. If it's flaked off or worn away, you may need to recoat it. It's a product called Slip Plate. Works very well, readily available. So yes, this is your high voltage lead. There is no suction cup on a Predicta. It's just a little clip lead going in here. This this has been discharged for a long time, so there's no shock hazard here. That's that's all it is. And it goes into this little metal disc here, and you squeeze it, it uh, clip it in or remove it. This is the yoke. It's uh, held on by the screw here. Vertical and horizontal coils uh, deflect the electron beam up and down and left and right. This, there are two types of CRT. Uh, this type has concentric magnetic rings for centering. Just little things, little ears here. These rotate. You rotate them to center the picture tube. I'll do a separate video on how to do all the setup and stuff. I just wanted to give you a quick tour. That is a magnet. It's powdered. Uh, you can put a, an Allen key in there and rotate it to adjust horizontal linearity. It's very brittle. Be careful not to crack it. And then this is your connector to the base of the CRT. Don't put pressure on that. Don't break that off. It's a thin glass nipple there. However, if you do need to dispose of a dead picture tube, that's what you want to do. Take this off. Take some wire nippers and just, just clip the end of that off. It'll let air in safely. It won't implode. However, still protect yourself. Heavy gloves, safety goggles, put on a coat, 
cover your up all your exposed skin, face shield if you can. These can implode, the glass will go flying if they do. Take care. Alright, all these wires all come down here and they go through the uh, swivel mount here. This paper is just to provide a little insulation I believe or keep dust out I'm not entirely sure I don't think it's critical to the operation of it and then all your wires just come out down through a hole in the bottom well after I went through all that cleaning and put it back together and remounted it powered up the set and realized I made a mistake I put all my attention on cleaning the front of it I never took the back cover off and cleaned the back of it. I never really needed to before. This time I did. What I discovered was there was corona discharge all around here. A little halo about an inch in diameter. There's enough nicotine, tar, whatever buildup on this glass surface. It's providing a conduction path all the way over here. That's about two and a half, three inches. It's making its way all the way over. I tried cleaning it with alcohol, going in through the back housing with the long Q-tip and getting it around there. It got a lot better. It's still not perfect. I want to do the job right. This is for a customer, so off it came. What I didn't realize is you can take this apart while it's still mounted on the TV. It's not as easy to do, but the same basic process. Get your fingers underneath the decorative band, pull it off, under the two screws, take off the spring steel band, remove the front cover, take off the two Phillips screws down in the front, take off the two side screws, and the whole back comes off. It's still connected. I can run it like this, and I will in a moment, but first I want to clean it. But there's something else I want to address. I've noticed on a few sets, we have a floppy picture tube. I mistakenly, in the past, thought it was because the set... Uh, was shipped roughly or mishandled and the picture tube was bent back and there was something damaged down in the collar and you just had to live with it because I couldn't see anything that it could be tightened or I tried to bend it back upright and just live with it but uh, I thought about it and this is a replacement picture tube I have a warranty card here it was replaced in July of 63 it's a factory or service uh, Philco label on here about it being replaced well, I noticed, I'll make some little careful observation by putting the uh, cardboard cover to the side and watching what's flopping. It's this inner tension band. It's not, I don't think it's tight enough. There's a gap between this tension band and the glass. So I think I can either tighten this down, which is a little nerve wracking, but I, I mean, I can feel it. Th this is very loose. Or I could wedge something in there some hard rubber or something like that, but let's, let's try tightening it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's really, really loose. It just never dawned on me that that might be the problem. I mean, back when they did replace this at the factory in 63, did they really mess up that badly? I mean, I can't imagine anybody's been inside this since I can't say it's impossible but I don't know why somebody would go inside and loosen these up and then put it back together <laughs> oh, that's still really loose now, this is one of those things that's kind of a lost art I don't know how tight this should be I mean, it should be tight enough that it's not flopping around, but I don't want to over-tighten it and stress the glass. I mean, after all, we're, this, this band is just against the glass. There's no padding or anything. I also think this grounding band should be secured a little better, maybe even tucked underneath that a little bit. Well, I will keep tightening this down. And... Uh, Yeah, that, that, uh, that is definitely getting better. Cool. 
That is much, much, much better. Ended up tightening down each of these bolts about half an inch. Still a little bit of play. Then I examined this again and noticed that there were some kind of support pieces, one on either side of this cable. And uh, if I push the CRT forward, it loosens up a gap there, and I wedged in some folded over paper. So I was getting a little bit wary of uh, cranking down on these bolts. And uh, yeah, that the only rocking left now basically is because the entire collar is uh, is rocking a little bit. That's so so much better than it was. All right, so let us now power it up in its naked form. <laughs> so what's the big deal? Well we should be able to see it glowing from the back side. It should be kind of a neat effect. Careful what I <laughs> grab onto when I swivel it around. Just turn up the brightness a little. So there's the front side. Now it's silverized. Uh, and there's a conductive coating on the interior as well for the high voltage, so it pretty well blocks light from coming out the back. I thought we might see more light poking through, but anyways, and notice there is no corona discharge, no hissing. So that was a success. Now all I have to do is put the thing back together again. Here it is after cleaning and reassembly with the set playing. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's not the most pleasant part of restoring a predictive television. It's a little tricky to get these apart and put them back together, and there's a chance you could damage something. You could scratch, you could crack this cover, you could damage the picture tube. On the other hand, it's the most distinctive part of the set. And if it's horrible looking or there's crap inside, you really do need to clean it. If you don't feel up to it, wait until you can find somebody to give you a hand who has some experience doing it. It's not the easiest thing in the world to get your fingers under here and pull this out. Uh, there's a bit of tension on there. That's the easiest way I know of, the least destructive way I know of to do it though. Pulling that spring off on the bottom and then trying to reattach it is really really difficult um, I, I, I hope these tips were helpful were useful to you good luck